Ms. Frankie, how do you plead to count one, aggravated child abuse, a second degree felony? Guilty. To count three, aggravated child abuse, a second degree felony? Guilty. Mental health counselor and former business partner of Ruby Frankie has also entered a guilty plea for the charges against her. Justice is coming in swiftly, and while we await the sentencing of both Ruby Frankie and former partner, Jody Hildebrand, let us take a deep dive into the background of the case to determine how different things would have been if disgraced family YouTuber Ruby Frank had not gotten herself entangled with Jody Hildebrand. According to court documents signed by Hildebrand on the 23rd year of December 2023, Hildebrand pleaded guilty to four out of six counts of second degree felony, aggravated child abuse. Prior to this time, Ruby Frankie, who was Hildebrandt's business partner, also pleaded guilty to four felony counts of second-degree aggravated child abuse on the 18th of December 2023. Remember, the victims in question are two of Ruby Frankie's minor children, Russell and Eve. Now, the court documents stated that Hildebrandt intentionally or knowingly inflicted and allowed another adult to inflict serious physical injuries upon two children living in her residence. The document describes the physical torture of one child who was forced into manual labor for long periods of time. This manual labor included wall sites and carrying boxes of books up and down stairs consistently. The document also states that the child was made to stand in direct sunlight for several days and work outside without shoes or adequate food and water. Even worse, the document revealed that the child's hands and feet were routinely bound together with rope and handcuffs, or at other times, the child would be tied to an adult or to wait. This sounds gruesome and absolutely horrifying, but unfortunately, the abuse did not stop there. The document also described the second child being subjected to similar treatment, like being forced to run barefoot on dirt roads for an extended period of time. He papers then added that the child in question was either forced or coerced into jumping into a cactus repeatedly. Now to add to all of this, these children were conditioned and made to believe that they were evil and possessed. Imagine going through such a horrific experience while being manipulated. There are absolutely no words for how vile this case is. A vile outcome of two women connected by a Mormon background coming together. Note that we are not blaming the Mormon doctrine for what happened in this case. That is a whole other conversation. Rather, we are simply pinpointing the common denominator in the lives of both women before they met. It is not exactly clear why, but at some point, Ruby Frankie sought professional help to fix some kind of problems in her family. And this was when she met Jody Hildebrand. They had allegedly gone to the Mormon church for a recommendation, and Jody Hildebrand came in highly recommended. From that point, Ruby must have found a solid rock in Jody. This relationship only solidified the beliefs that Ruby herself already had as a person and a mother. Jody Hildebrandt and Ruby Frankie then went on to make parenting videos together for Hildebrandt's now deleted YouTube channel connections. All of this finally culminated in the arrest of both women in August 2023. Following the arrest were subsequent charges with multiple counts of child abuse. On the 30th of August, one of Ruby Frankie's children, who had been staying in Jody Hildebrandt's home, made his way to a neighbor's home and asked him to call the police. In the 911 call, the caller said the 12-year-old looked emaciated, duct tape was wrapped around his ankles and wrists, and he asked for food and water. The emotional caller said at intervals that the child was afraid and that there were clear signs that he had been detained. 911, the address of your emergency. Okay, and the phone number you're calling from. Tell me exactly what's happened. I just had a 12-year-old boy show up here at my front door asking for help. And he uh, said he just came from a neighbor's house, and we know there's been problems at this neighbor's house. He's emaciated, he's got tape around his legs, he's hungry, and he's thirsty. Okay. Is, he, is your door locked? No, 
I'm sitting outside with him on the on the front patio. His ankles are taped up, and he won't tell us why. Okay. But he has duct tape around each ankle. Yeah, there's sores around them. I think the a good chance he's been. Uh, he also said. Oh, and he has them around his ankles. I mean his wrists as well. Okay, this boy has been. And he's, <laughs> this kid has obviously been. I think he's been. He's been detained. He's been. He's obviously covered in wounds. Okay. Let's get the paramedics headed over that way, okay? No, oh, that's a good idea, too. Also, during the course of the 911 call, the child then identified his mother as Ruby Frankie and indicated that the home he had just escaped from belonged to Jody Hildebrand. According to a press release issued by the Santa Clara Evans Public Safety Department, the police found another child in the home in a similar physical condition of malnourishment. According to a search warrant filed in the 5th District Court in Utah, the police alleged the 12-year-old child had deep lacerations from being tied up with a rope. The child informed medical personnel and officers that a cayenne pepper and honey paste was made to put in his wounds. Evidence corroborated with this use of cayenne pepper was found in the room of Jody Hildebrandt. This evidence was in the form of medical gauze dressings near a cayenne pepper and honey paste, according to a law enforcement official who was on the scene. As you can imagine, this observation added to Jody Hildebrandt's knowledge that abuse was going on in the home. Both women were arrested that same day, and each woman was charged with six counts of aggravated child abuse. Ruby Frankie's four other children were then taken into the custody of the Department of Child and Family Services. Ruby Frankie was a popular YouTuber who made years of videos featuring her and her six children on the Eight Passengers channel. And in those years, many fans raised concerns about her discipline methods. Her videos began with everyday scenes of parenting and interacting with her kids. But as the kids grew older, Ruby started to incorporate her disciplinary methods by her own admission as part of her content. What started out as a fun peek into the lives of an average Mormon family quickly turned into a displeasing sight. Ruby banned Christmas for two of her children, kept them home from school to clean the floor, and frequently threatened to deny them food. But we will get to Ruby's questionable parenting later. Now, let's talk a little about Jody. On the other hand, Jody Hildebrandt was not as popular as Ruby Frankie. She was a mental health counselor, and even more shockingly, she is a mother of two herself. Jody Hildebrandt was basically an enigma outside of her work. However, public licensing records and statements from her former clients have so far been a useful medium to gain more information about her. She ran the YouTube channel Connections, which said that her approach is to heal relationships through personal growth. According to its website, Connections offers paid courses for people to change and champion any addictive or self-destructive behavior, such as feelings of worthlessness or inadequacy, conflicts in relationships, intimacy problems, communication breakdowns, and frankly any block that prevents having, and creating peace and joy. Ruby Frankie and Jody Hildebrandt collaborated on video content for the platform. Investigators even noted that Ruby Frankie was listed as an employee on Hildebrandt's website. In January 2012, Jody's license to practice as a counselor in Utah was placed on probation for about 18 months for a series of violations. According to Utah Division of Professional Licensing Documents, Jody Hildebrandt repeatedly disclosed sensitive private information about her clients to their church, clergy, and other mental health therapists without their consent. On a different occasion, Jody allegedly also shared a client's medical diagnosis with officials of a local university. According to the document, this action proved detrimental to the client in question. The Utah Division of Professional Licensing has since released a statement that there is currently a stipulation and order which limits Jody Hildebrandt's professional license so that she cannot do any mental health counseling. The division spokesperson also said, this is called a limitation, pending an outcome of her criminal case. However, she is prohibited from practicing as a mental health counselor in any way. Depending on the outcome, the Division of Professional Licensing may take further action on her license this ensures Hildebrandt's right to due process while ensuring public safety. But that was then. 
Jodie Hildebrandt pled guilty to the charges against her, and we can all imagine what becomes of her license and career now. If you have been following this case closely, then you already know that Ruby Frankie is the only one who really believed in Jodie Hildebrandt and her teachings. Since the arrest, Ruby Frankie's sisters, who are notably vloggers themselves, have spoken up about their mistrust of Jodie Hildebrandt and the teachings at Connections. One sister, Bonnie Hoellen, mentioned in a YouTube video that they were unaware of the full extent of what was happening in Ruby's home because Ruby had distanced herself from her mother and siblings. Bonnie Hoa Lane stated that she believed Ruby and Jody's involvement with connections led to complete indoctrination, and she disagreed with their extreme beliefs. I kept quiet for three years on the topic of our sister Ruby, and Jody, and Kevin, and connections. That is what we have stayed quiet about. We did not know what they were doing because like we said, we were cut off. We did not have access to anyone. My thoughts towards Ruby and Jody and Kevin and connections is, is that it was all bull crap. It was, it was complete indoctrination of this thing that they created. I don't agree with how extreme they are on everything. I knew they were weird. I knew that they were off. Those are the things that we kept quiet about because what was I gonna say? What was I going to do? I was not gonna come out and publicly say that I don't like my sister and I don't like what she's doing and I think she's weird. That is what we kept quiet about. It wasn't until about a year ago when we were able to reconnect with Sherry. Again, we kept that quiet. We never came out and said anything. You guys saw us together and those were little glimpses when Sherry was ready to allow us to show those glimpses with her permission. And it was then that we were learning slowly bits and pieces of, of more. And that's where the part of behind the scenes, we did everything that we could. We did everything legally that we could do. And for those that were saying that they'd go in and bust down doors and do whatever it took to end up in jail, because from jail, I can't do anything. So I still stand by what I said, is that I did everything that I could with the knowledge that I had and within the legal rights to Ruby and Kevin. Another sister, Julie Griffiths Deru, also expressed a similar level of discomfort with Jody and the teachings that Ruby was bringing to family events. She recalled how weird it all seemed in the beginning and how uncomfortable Jody's teachings made the family. Three years ago, Ruby, everything was great. It seemed to be fine anyway. We were a typical family. She was getting some therapy counseling because their family needed it, which I think is great. However, I think you need to get it from a great source, read the reviews. Jody Hildebrandt and her website or therapy style, I don't know what you want to call it, connections, was not a great resource. And we all saw it. We all felt weird about this Jody lady. We didn't, we weren't comfortable with it. We didn't like it. We didn't like the teachings Ruby was bringing to the family functions. And we were this close to telling her, if you come to our family events anymore, we do not want to hear what you were learning through connections because we don't like it. We never did say that to her, but we thought it. Um, anyway, so three years ago, Ruby and I hung out do, bottling tomatoes, and then a few weeks later, crap hit the fan, and she left the family. And she didn't even call me to say, hey, you know, Julie, you're doing this and this, and I don't like it, you're living your life in distortion, so I'm gonna have to take some time away from you. No, literally, nothing. She did call my mom and yelled at my mom on the phone for 45 minutes, and accused her of things that were not true. It was almost as if Ruby had been making up memories from her childhood. She was trying to grab at anything she could and she would exaggerate on everything. So she started all of her lies back then, lying to everyone in her life, getting rid of all of her friends and family, and I literally had no contact with her. She wouldn't respond to any texts or emails over 
the um, time that I tried reaching out to her, never got a response from her, so. Around the time she aligned with Jody and her teachings, she began to cut everyone off from her life. From parents to siblings, friends, and even her husband, Kevin Frankie. Meanwhile, an attorney for Kevin Frankie, Randy Kester, has said to the media that Jody Hildebrandt had encouraged the Frankie's 13-month separation. In his own words, Kevin did not want to be separated. He wanted to work through concerns as a family. There was never any formal written decree of separate maintenance or separation agreement. The separation was under terms prescribed by Ruby and Jody Hildebrandt. Seven clients claimed that Hildebrandt discouraged them from talking to people outside of her influence, diagnosed some male clients with porn or sex addictions against their own judgment, and pressured them to adopt the Mormon religion. Former client Stephanie Jones stated that Hildebrandt believed that only those within her group were living in truth, and therefore, clients were not allowed to discuss their issues with anyone else. One client, Spencer Tibbetts, revealed that Hildebrandt counseled him at the age of 16 after his parents discovered a secret phone he used for playing video games. Hildebrandt then enrolled him in a group for men with pornography addictions. Tibbetts claimed that Hildebrandt told him he would only receive help from therapy if he accepted the Mormon religion. Trey Warner also came forward to describe a very similar incident from his own time with Jody. Trey Warner claimed in an interview that Jody would employ manipulation techniques to convince people, mostly men, that they posed a threat to their families. Trey actually gave a vivid account of one instance during one of their group meetings. He mentioned a man in his class who ran a very successful business and had a good family. This man freely admitted to looking twice at a woman he found alluring. Then Jody said that he was a threat to his wife and children because his thoughts were impure. Just like that, Jody was able to convince that man to rent another apartment and move away from his family. Coming into the Connections Classroom social media pages now are just the beginning, according to former client Trey Warner. He joined a support group at the recommendation of a friend trying to improve his marriage. But after a while, he says he grew more suspicious of what Jody Hildebrandt was teaching. It started to feel more and more evil. And I finally, in one of the group meetings, I got up and I just said, this is off. Warner, man that had a successful business that believed that he was a danger to his wife and his family because he did a double take as a woman. Like if he saw a beautiful woman, he, he would see and he'd look again. This guy got his own apartment and separated from his family because he was a danger. In some cases, Warner claims husbands were separated from their families for so long, they were considering suicide. They felt so sick and like such a failure that they just felt like they shouldn't be here. The fact that Jody claims to specialize in helping people overcome their addiction to explicit content and related behaviors is the problem. Because it is really easy to use such things against the client in question. With such a manipulative hold, she can humiliate people and even give them the impression that there is something wrong with them for having human emotions and behaviours. This could very well be what happened to the Frankie family. Jody might have convinced Kevin that he posed a threat to his family and needed to fix his problems before coming home. Now that Jody has pled guilty to the child abuse charges and her sentencing is set for February 22, 2024, all these victims will have sighs of relief. They will feel a certain ease that comes with knowing that justice, in some form, will finally be served. Perhaps none would be more happy than Jody Hildebrandt's niece, Jessie Hildebrandt. Live now, Jessie, I know this must be difficult to revisit. I appreciate you joining us tonight. Yeah, um, it's been... It's been um, surreal, to say the least, the last few months, and uh, especially in the last week. I can imagine. And your aunt has admitted to some heinous acts of abuse against children. Have you been shocked to see any of this? Um, shocked, no. Um, I went through very, very similar experiences when I was 16 years old, when I was left under her care. And the similarities are um, hard to listen to. Um, this has been a pattern of hers since, you know, for 15 years, at least, if not longer, I'm, I can't speak to what she did before me, but, um, this is not, this is not new. If it's not too difficult, can you share with me, what did you experience? What happened at the hands of your aunt? Um, it's it's hard to quantify and um, 
the, everything that happened because it was not just physical abuse, but it was emotional and severe spiritual abuse as well um, because of the culture that already exists within the Mormon church. Um, she took advantage and um, there was uh, being duct taped and starved and being emotionally isolated and um, tortured, um, being forced to sleep outside in the snow, being telling my family that it was because she was afraid that I was going to murder her in her sleep, telling me that Satan was working through me. And all the while, I believed what she was telling me. But can all of this really be blamed on Jody Hildebrandt alone? Let us cross-examine the fact. The truth is, as some of the Frankie children grew older, Ruby began putting their disciplinary styles out there for the world to see over a span of seven years. We still can't fathom how the bad parenting in the quote and the criticism that came as a result of it did nothing to affect the growth of the YouTube channel. I'm only going to say it one more time, and then you're going to lose the privilege to eat dinner. Cut. One more thing in my house. <laughs> I'm going to take the scissors, look at me, and I'm going to cut its head off. Grandma will be so mad! So what are you going to do? Are you going to cut anything else? No. You promise? Look at Mama. I just got a text message uh, from Eve's teacher, and she said that Eve did not pack a lunch today, and can I bring a lunch over to the school? This happens quite often when you're having raising children um, because I know that her teacher is uncomfortable with her being hungry and not having a lunch and it would ease her discomfort if I came to the school with a lunch. Um, but I, I responded and just said, Eve is responsible for making her lunches in the morning and she actually told me she did pack a lunch. So the natural outcome is she's just going to need to be hungry. And hopefully, hopefully nobody gives her food and nobody steps in and gives her a lunch. Videos like this sparked a whole new discussion as some viewers started to worry about the safety of these kids. .in 2020, a video was posted to the 8 Passengers YouTube channel and quickly rose to viral status. It was the video where Ruby's second oldest child, Chad, had just admitted that he had actually gotten into trouble for playing a practical joke on one of his younger brothers, and that's why he had to sleep on a beanbag chair for seven months. I was taken away for seven months, and then you give it back like a couple weeks ago. I don't think our viewers know that. You've been sleeping on a beanbag. I've been sleeping on a beanbag <laughs> since October, and they gave my room back like two weeks ago. Oh, I'll give you the reason why I lost my bedroom. I think so. I think this is the reason. At least this is the reason that's been in my head. Them. It's pretty funny, but now that I look back, I mean, it's pretty depressing. No, we never told our viewers. That I woke Russell up at 2 in the morning and told him that we're going to Disneyland and he has to pack. <laughs> and he got up and made his bed all neatly and then packed all his clothes in a suitcase. And then he walked out the door and I'm like, Russell, and he's like, what? And he's all happy. <laughs> has his sunglasses on. Do you think it's funny because... And then I walk out. If you think it's funny, then you... That was seven months ago. Maybe you need longer without a bedroom. It, it was not for me. <laughs> Russell got the big bedroom and Chai got the, the smaller bedroom. Smallest. And Russell's bigger bedroom also had a bathroom. But what you guys didn't know was didn't. <laughs> Chad didn't get any room. Mm -hmm. he, didn't, he didn't get anything. He was sleeping on the floor in the family room. Abby, we took the phone away from Abby um, November. in November. I and and you may you may never get the phone back. Probably not. No, I have no friends. You can play with friends. No, like I don't have friends. I don't have friends either. I literally like told my friends I'm not hanging out with them anymore. Because, because they're, they say some pretty people. messed up stuff. Wait, but I don't even know where they live. <laughs> they're pretty far away. So, summer goal, become the best athlete I possibly can. We can all agree that kids play pranks all the time. And while these pranks can get out of hand, it is certainly not enough reason to be denied access to a bed for seven months. There was also a brief mention of some wilderness therapy camp that Chad was forced to attend. These wilderness camps have such a bad reputation that most people see them as glorified prisons. 
However, the Frankie parents responded that they were teaching their kids about the consequences of their actions. Unless you find a friend who's willing to share some of their food with you, I don't, I don't think you're going to be able to eat. But if you're not responsible for your lunch and your lunch money, that's the natural consequence. And I'm really sorry you're learning this the hard way. I will have a wonderful, yummy snack. Just hang in there today and, and just make it make up your mind. You're going to be really careful and make sure you grab your stuff when you go to school next time. And maybe you have a, a good friend who will share some of their sandwich with you or something. Russell, I'm really sorry. He sounded like he was going to cry. Concerned viewers analyzed these videos and then signed petitions to persuade the appropriate authorities to take action. The eight passenger channel was eventually deleted in 2023. Now, all of this went down before Ruby ever crossed paths with Jody. So we believe we now have our answer to what would happen if Ruby Frankie never collaborated with Jody Hildebrand. We would like to think that a mother who could starve her children and deny them a bed to lay on can very well bind her kids and even spread cayenne pepper all over the resulting wounds. Fine, there is sufficient reason to believe that Jody might have had a manipulative hold on Ruby, but the truth is that it would not have taken a lot of effort on Jody's part to get the job done. Ruby Frankie had already been abusing her kids before she ever crossed paths with Jody. If anything, their collaboration only made things worse for everyone, especially the kids involved.